Hey, what's up everybody? This is D with Kicking Bass TV. Today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through exactly what I carry with me on a typical day of bass fishing, from my rods, to my tackle, to my lures, to everything else to help consolidate your gear into one tackle bag or box, and sort of cover you year round. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below and stay tuned, thanks. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be showing you our sort of all-in-one bass fishing tackle bag and pretty much what we carry around with us on a typical day bass fishing year round. When it comes to rods, I typically only carry three or four with me if I'm only out pond hopping and on the boat, and that's gonna be the Daiwa Procaster 80s here. The reason I like to use these is they're super versatile. I've got one set up with braided line that I throw my heavy swim baits on, one with light line that's dedicated to finesse fishing and lighter tackle, and then a couple with 12 and 15 pound line that I'll use for crank baits, kitex, and spinner baits so that I'm kinda of covered on all bases. Taking a look at some of the things in a tackle bag, up first, gonna be bare necessities for me, and that's gonna be charging cables for my GoPro and my phone, as well as a large capacity backup charging pack, which is a great thing to have if you're out filming and fishing as long as I typically am, because you definitely don't wanna be caught with a dead phone or camera. After that, something every fisherman should have on them, and that's a pair of Hemos here just for removing hooks from your fish. And then I like to carry a little multi-tool like this one here, kind of covers me with a variety of different tools just in case I have some issues with my hardware or something that I need to fix throughout the day. In this top pocket here, I generally just keep things like my fishing license and a couple of backup memory cards for the camera. After that, we got some soft plastics. And while I do fish with soft plastics quite a bit, I'm not one of those people who carry 50 bags around with me. I generally have a couple bags of Z-Man baits that I keep separated. And then usually a bag like this that I keep a variety of things from my craws to my swim baits to my worms that I'll either put some anise scent or some fish oil into to kind of enhance some of those more artificial smelling soft baits. And we got a pack of Sungill Kitex. A digital scale, of course, for weighing our fish. And then it's always a good idea to carry some additional fishing line with you, so I've usually got some 8 pound for my finesse rigs and some 12 or 14 pound for most everything else. Side pockets, I generally just keep a bottle of water, and then I got a can of Bang Shad Scent, which is great for the event that you get something like sunblock or gas on your hands, but you definitely don't want to spread your line or lure because it absolutely kills your chance of catching a fish. For that same reason, I generally keep a small, clean hand towel with me as well. And when it comes to the main portion of my arsenal, I like to keep things contained to three small Plano boxes, which I find is more than enough to carry with me what I need. And I'll go ahead and walk you through what I keep in each of those right now. This first box is where the majority of my terminal tackle and finesse baits will be kept. Starting off with my Senko worms, as well as a few of my favorite trick worms that I like to throw. Moving down to the terminal tackle, I've got my worm weights, peg stoppers, treble hooks, Ned rigs, miscellaneous hooks for drop shot fishing and snagging carp, offset hooks, and of course weighted swim bait hooks. Then I've got some more Kitex here. I've also got a variety of plastics that I like to throw year round, which are my green and red champ cross, these glow flukes, and one of my favorite go-to smallie baits, which is a grub tail worm here. And that's pretty much it for that tray, which for the most part covers all of my bases as far as my finesse fishing goes, as well as any terminal tackle that I find I might need to replace throughout the day. Next up gonna be my spin baits, swim baits, and topwater lures. Not pictured here are my S-Waver glide bait and topwater frog, which are currently tied on the line, but I've got my 360 GT surge bait line that I like to throw in a variety of different shapes and colors. I've got a heavier, quicker sinking minnow swimmer, I've got a couple of hard body segmented swim baits, and then I've got a variety of different power bait style swim shads. I've got a couple of my favorite topwater buzz baits, which are actually the smaller Strike King Mini Pro Buzzes, and they're great for smallies, as well as a couple of finesse jigs for flipping and throwing into cover. I've got my favorite bluegill imitation weedless skirted swim jig, as well as a chatterbait with a rage craw trailer. And then moving over to the spin bait side of things, I've got everything from this large profile double willow bladed spin bait with a Kitex swimmer to a more traditional double Colorado bladed spin bait with no trailer on it. And that pretty much covers our wire baits, swim baits, and jigs. And in our third and final box today, something that I don't think any bass fisherman should ever leave home without, and that's a tray full of crankbaits. 
To start out, we've got some smaller inch to inch and a half size lipless cranks that range in body weights of eighth of an ounce to quarter ounce and are great for fishing for smallmouth bass. Then we'll move up to our two and three inch size, more slender body XPS style lipless cranks that are especially useful for maintaining a weedless presence through underwater weed beds and grass lines. Next up is gonna be my favorite lure and the one that you guys have seen us catch the most fish on. And that's gonna be the Cotton Cordell Red Craw Imitation Lipless Crankbait, which we specifically like to upgrade with matching red Komagatsu treble hooks. Then I've got my shallow to medium diving square build cranks, which are gonna cover me in depths of anywhere from two to 10 feet. I've got a couple of suspending jerk baits that are great all the way from the beginning of the fall transition straight through to the post spawn, specifically the storm perch style rip stop. Then I've got this much larger three and a half inch crankbait, which is great for catching those deep water summer bass. I also keep a variety of different minnow style crankbaits on hand from the smaller body Wally divers to the larger arch body deep diver like this one here. And last but not least, my deep diving crankbaits, I like to stick with the tried and true, the Strike King 5 and 6 XDs or the Storm Arashi Deep 25s. And that pretty much covers all the different crankbaits that we'll throw year round. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for today. Hopefully this video has helped you consolidate your gear into one easier to manage all-in-one system and give you a better idea of what we throw year-round. As always, the best way to support us here at Kickin' Bass TV is to hit that subscribe button down below and you can hit that bell notification right next to it to stay up to date with all our new release content. Till next time guys, I'm D with Kickin' Bass TV. Subscribe!